morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Navaratri. We are still in the nine days of devotion to the goddess. We are in specifically the energy of Lakshmi right now. Lakshmi is so beautiful. Um, all the goddesses. You know, I've been talking this week a lot about inviting in all of the energies of ourselves, not just the parts that we like, but the parts that are challenging. When I chanted on Tuesday morning to begin Navaratri, the beautiful Devi Mahatman, it was so pretty and it is so pretty. I've chanted it many times because it chants to the places that are delusion and illusion, as well as the places that are beauty and that are things that we seek out in ourselves that we love, but also the places that we um, are very confused, feel stuck. You know, we call on those places because the more that we bring to us what it is that we wish to know, the more we will learn. <laughs> if we push away illusion and delusion and be like, oh, this is not part of me, well, how can we ever then grow? So during Navaratri, it's just a very powerful time of um, letting go, which is what I'm going to read, the poem that Mark shared with us last weekend. Letting go and then really becoming. So that co combination of letting go and relaxing around and then becoming everything that we're meant to be. So some of you have heard this, but I'm gonna go ahead and read it again, because it's so beautiful. Go ahead and close your eyes if you'd like to. This is by a poet named Sapphire Rose. She says, she let go. Without a thought or a word, she let go. She let go of the fear. She let go of the judgments. She let go of the confluence of opinions swarming around her head. She let go of the committee of indecision within her. She let go of all the right reasons, wholly and completely without hesitation or worry. She just let go. She didn't ask anyone for their advice. I love that. She didn't read a book on how to let go. I love that. She didn't research the scriptures. She just let go. She let go of all the memories that held her back. And she let go of all the anxiety that kept her from moving forward. She let go of the planning of all and all the calculations about how to do it just right. She didn't promise to let go. She didn't journal about it. She didn't write the projected date in her day timer. I love that. I do that all the time. On Monday, I will start that. Something about the weekend. You can't start anything on the weekends. She made no public announcement and put no ad in the paper. She didn't check the weather report or read her daily horoscope. She just let go. She didn't analyze whether she should let go. She didn't call her friends to discuss the matter. She didn't do a five-step treatment. She didn't call the prayer line. <laughs> she didn't utter a word, not one. She just let go. There was no one around when it happened. I love that too. There was no applause or congratulations. I love that too. <laughs> <laughs> no one thanked her or praised her. She just let go. No one noticed a thing. Like a leaf falling from a tree, she just let go. There was no effort. There was no struggle. There wasn't good and there wasn't bad. This is the goddess. It just was. And in the space of letting go, she let it all be. A small smile came across her face. A light breeze blew through her and the sun and the moon shone forevermore. This is the goddess. It's not about good, it's not about bad, it's not about right, it's not about wrong. Because goddess knows, goddess knows <laughs> that what we perceive to be good or we perceive to be bad can be absolutely the opposite. And who we perceive as the bad guy can absolutely be the one that brings us where we need to go. If you haven't yet closed your eyes. I began my third year as apprenticing with Robin Rose Bennett, Green Medicine this week, actually last month, but I was with her this week. And we got to pick our plant ally for the year, which means that I 
sit in deep meditation and a plant comes to me and I choose to be with that plant for the whole year and get to know everything about it. The plant that chose me is called Artemisia vulgaris or mugwort. It's everywhere. Many of you probably take it out of your yard and get rid of it. But she is spectacular for our nervous system, for our hormones, for dreams, for visions. That's what I'm saying is we throw away so many things that we think are weeds <laughs> or don't matter. So when we open to the goddess, we open to everything. We let go. Bring your hands together at your heart center. Inhale for the sound of OM. Deep breath in. Release your hands. Open your eyes. Come onto your hands and knees, please. Press back into child's pose, hips back to heels. Just let go. Let go of right, let go of wrong, let go of good, let go of bad. Just breathe into this space right here and open it up wide. Remember you are the blue sky, no beginning and no end. Good, rise up into downward facing dog, lift your hips high to the sky. Make sure you have a nice long dog. So maybe walk your hands a little further forward than you usually would. Good, darling. You can always bend your knees here if you need to. And then begin to breathe deeply. Take in all the sounds around you, the energy that surrounds you. And then begin to walk your feet up to your hands, standing floor bent. Make sure your heels are right behind your second toes. You just drop in. Blocks underneath your hands are nice here. Then I do this a lot in Kundalini class. I don't do it quite as much um, in this asana class, but I feel like I want to. So the energy here is to allow yourself to feel your auric field, the energy that's just directly around you to fan the auric field is what I call it. So reach your arms out and come all the way up. And then exhale, reach your arms to the sky and then exhale, bow forward, keeping the arms out. So out the whole time, not in front of you, out alongside of you, like wings. Good, inhale the arms out and up. Exhale the arms out and down. Close your eyes and just fan the auric field. That unseen world that is always around you, guiding you, supporting you, loving you, all for you. So much of this idea of what we cannot see must not be. But that's where the uh, human mind gets very, very spoiled. Go ahead, a couple more times because it thinks that the only thing that is possible is what it sees. 
It's a very funny thought. There's no other worlds but this world. Good, one last time. Next time you come up, stay up, right? Reach your arms up to the sky. Hold on to your left wrist and pull to the right. Keep the inner thighs pressing back and wide. Keep the rib cage drawing in. Keep your head in line with your arms, please. Come back to center, try the other side. Push down through those legs, reach down through those legs. And come back to center, bend your elbows wide, cactus arms, bend your knees slightly, take your butt back a little bit. Now start to lean back as if you're gonna go into a back bend, but you cannot push your thighs forward, you cannot push your ribs forward. <laughs> like a, a police walking around, <laughs> poking your ribs in, poking your thighs back. <laughs> yeah. And then bow forward, clasp your hands behind your back, take your arms up and over any amount. Drop your left hand down to the floor and bring it to your outer right ankle. Left hand, outer right ankle. Left hand, outer right ankle. <laughs> right arm to the sky. I know, those twister moments. We don't play twister enough, do we? Inner knees wide, and then try the other side. Inner knees wide. So your knees are gonna wanna fall in. Don't let them, pull them wide, even though you're pressing your shin in. Open that shoulder, nice Jane. Nice Jackie. Good Larry, drop the hands down. Step your left leg back behind you. Inhale your arms to the sky. Nice high lunge. Right leg is forward, left leg is back. Keep the back heel lifted so you can play with your balance. Bend that front knee a lot. And then go ahead and bend your elbows again and send your throat back. So the difference between your throat moving back and your head falling back. So just move your throat back. Clasp your hands behind your back, take a breath and bow forward. Let your head touch the floor, go, go, go. Go, go, go. <laughs> Hands down to the floor, jump switch to the other side, other leg forward. <laughs> Inhale the arms to the sky. I had this on Thursday too, I had a sassy group on Thursday too. <laughs> Bend those elbows wide, lift your chest. Pull your throat back. Bend that front knee just a little bit more. Nice, Carla. Clasp your hands behind you, beautiful Robin. Bow forward. Honestly, think of your head touching the floor. So let go that much, but stay steady in your legs. Good, Darwin. Hands to the floor, downward facing dog. <laughs> Come forward to plank, lower all the way down to your belly, rise up into cobra and come into that intoxicated cobra where you just move your body side to side, turning your shoulders left and right to your hips. Nice Alice and Roz, beautiful and downward facing dog. Keep that long dog. We do so much limiting ourselves. We get so small sometimes, get big. Inhale that right leg back and up behind you, down dog split. Step your right foot forward, open up to Virabhadrasana two, parallel your back foot, to the back of your mat, right foot forward, left foot parallels the back of your mat. Facing the long side of your mat, second warrior. Good job. Bend that front knee a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take your arms up to the sky. Hold on to your right wrist and pull to the back of your mat. Pull back. Good, straighten your front leg. Come on up onto that heel. So lift your right foot up. You're just on the heel. Now reach for your right ankle or a block. Keeping that foot lifted, play with your balance. 
Gorgeous. Move that left shoulder a little closer to your ear. Yes. Now lower that right foot into triangle. Navel stays in. You're still in triangle. Good job. Beautiful, Veronica. Touch down, downward facing dog. I never talked to Veronica. <laughs> She's like my family members, you know. <laughs> I never acknowledge her. <laughs> Inhale the left leg back and out behind you. Slow your breath down. Step your left foot forward. Open up to Virabhadrasana the two. Take your arms to the sky, hold on to your left wrist and pull to the back of your mat. Keep that other knee, the left knee moving forward. Beautiful. Straighten that front leg, come on up to that heel, dig it down and then reach forward until you either reach your left hand to the ankle or to a block. Move that right arm a little closer to your ear, beautiful. Nice, Elisa. Jane. Good. Lower that left foot. Stay in triangle. Breathing in and breathing out. Nice, Kathy. Drop the hand down to the floor. Step back, downward facing dog. Nice, Marjorie. Forward to plank, please, using your right hand to hold Juvashi Stas. Now you can always lower your bottom knee, stacking your left leg on top of your right leg, or lower your right knee down to the mat, left arm to the sky. And again, bring your left arm a little closer to your ear. Nice, Susan. And release the left hand down, switch sides. So the idea in Vashi Sasana, right, it's, a, it's an arm balance. Can you let go here? Can you let go? So you're finding that sense of grace and effort coming together. Hand to the floor, lower down to your belly, turn your cheek to the side. Rest. The energy of Lakshmi is nature, mother nature. So springtime is like such a Lakshmi time of the year. Everything opening to its perfection, everything waking up. So during Navaratri, when we follow that same gift of nature, waking up, waking up, waking up, we begin to offer everything that we are. Turn your cheek to the other side. My plant ally is all about visioning. You can drink her as tea, you can put her in your food like spinach, you can smoke her, dried. Good, reach back for your ankles here, please. Now bring your forehead back down to the mat, please. See if you can draw your navel in beautifully so that power, your ribs even can lift here. And then lift your shoulders and now start to pull your ankles away from your hands and lift up slowly. Push your feet into your hands for one more breath. Nice, Andra. And back you go, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward, open to Virabhadrasana two. Lift your arms a little higher and then descend your right thigh a little lower. <laughs> Good, turn your palms face up, see what that feels like. Let go, let go, let go. 
And then straighten that right leg again and reach for triangle pose. And what does it feel like if we don't have to touch the floor? If we just feel the upper body just opening that wingspan, there's nothing that we have to touch or know where we have to get to. And then bend that right knee and come forward into half moon. So lifting your left leg off the floor using a block underneath your right hand if you need it. And then for fun, just bring your hands to your heart center in prayer, staying in your half moon. Good, bring that right hand back down to the floor and step back, downward facing dog. <laughs> I love the hesitation from some of you. Like, no, I don't know that I wanna do that. <laughs> no thanks. Left foot forward, Virabhadrasana two. And again, just play here. Turn your palms face up, lift your arms a little higher, lower your left thigh a little lower, draw that navel in. Right, the effort and the grace, they come together and you can let go then. Beautiful, come forward into triangle once again, straightening that front leg. Make sure that right shoulder is moving back. Make sure you feel that hollowing in that armpit and extension through the arms. And then bend your left knee and come forward into half moon. And see what it feels like to bring your hands together at your heart center. You don't have to call any friends to tell them you're doing it. <laughs> Bring that left hand back down to the floor, right arm to the sky, step back, downward facing dog. Nobody's gonna applaud you. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah, not, post not posting on Facebook. Oh, I have a great story for you. Some of you didn't hear this yet. Jump to squat. Speaking of not having to have applause. <laughs> so my daughter now is working for a vet near her home and uh, a woman walked in last week. Did I tell you guys this already? You guys heard, I you're heard. always around me. <laughs> I, I don't think it, I, yeah, I'm gonna tell it again because it's such a good story and I don't think everybody heard it. And if you are in a different pose and squat and you need to come out of it, then come into four Ben. Otherwise, squat is a great place to hang out in for this story. Um, and you can always put a blanket underneath your heels. So a woman walked up, an older woman, my daughter Shanna said, that could not pay her bill in full. And the vet's office has been pretty strict about it because last year during COVID, mainly a lot of people couldn't pay for their animals' um, bills because they had lost their jobs, but they were still getting treated. So the vet office is in a lot of debt. And so they're making people pay really in full as, as much as they can. And the woman couldn't afford it. And so she had gone to sit down and the gentleman that came up right after her, who heard the story that she couldn't afford it, um, said to Shanna, my daughter, I wanna pay for the woman's bill. And my daughter said it's $1,600. And she, he said, that's fine. And handed her the credit card to pay for it um, as well as his own bill. But he said, right, don't put it on Facebook. He, he said, I don't want her to know that it's from me. So Shanna waited till he left <laughs> and then told her <laughs> that it was from him. And such a beautiful story, right? So beautiful. Standing forward, Ben, please. Should tell you more stories while you're in squat. That's a good place to <laughs> inhale your left leg to the sky, please. Left leg up, standing split. You're pointing your left toes to the floor. Left toes to the floor, which is gonna help square those hips. And then take your right arm to the sky, right arm. So it's twisting half moon pose. And now if you'd like to reach back for that ankle or stay right where you are. Spread your toes. Nice, Lauren. 
All right, so Lauren is giving an extra little something. Lift your left hand up as into a half prayer. Sorry. <laughs> and lower back down, downward facing dog. Take it through vinyasa of your choice or none at all. Walk or jump to the front of your mat. Standing forward bend. Inhale your right leg up, point the toes to the floor. I know sometimes you don't listen when I say to inhale, but that's a perfect place to inhale when you're lifting your leg, to allow your breath to engage, right? To allow your breath to help you feel like you're letting go. Interesting, right? The more you do it without the breath, the harder you have to work. Left arm to the sky. Maybe reach back for that ankle and maybe take your right hand off the floor as well. Squeeze those legs, it helps. Gorgeous, and reach back, downward facing up. Come forward to plank, please. Lower all the way down to your belly. Come on up into Sphinx, elbows underneath your shoulders. Just lift your um, shins and feet off the floor, so bend your knees, and just windshield wiper your legs side to side. Beautiful, come back to center, release those legs back down. Take your right forearm, place it in front of you, so parallels the front of your mat. Take your left hand back for your left ankle thigh stretch. Make sure your left knee is not pulling out to the left, so it's directly behind you. And then press your knee down to the floor as your heel comes towards your outer hip. To keep that knee anchored, spread your toes. Beautiful, switch sides. Allow the effort, the grace of letting go happen at the same time. Good, gentle release, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward, lower your left knee down to the mat, a blanket underneath that left knee is quite nice. Inhale your arms to the sky, Anjaneyasana. Maybe clasp your hands together, point your finger to the sky if you'd like to, see what that feels like, reach up. And maybe that will allow you to really take those armpits back. I know it's weird. I talk about armpits a lot, but there's that lymph energy that really gets to move when you get to hollow the armpits. And maybe that means you need to do cactus arms to create that. Yeah, Lisa, there you go. Good, Anna. And then hands down to the floor, straighten that front leg into Ardha Hanumanasana. So you're gonna keep your right hip, excuse me, your left hip on top of your left knee, straighten your right leg, dig that heel down, pull it back, and then float over that right leg as much as possible, maybe have blocks next to you. See if you can create a little longer exhale here. Good, now start to uh, send that leg a little bit more forward into more of a Hanuman, any amount. Taking that right leg forward, any amount. Good, Jane, yep. Hanuman asana, split pose.
Beautiful. Walk that back in. So go ahead and plant your right foot. Keep your right leg forward. Just plant your right foot on the mat and then lift your back knee up. Step your back foot in just a little bit and go straight on both legs. Parshvottanasana. Just let go. What is it in your world that you can either let in or let go to open your world up more? See that this is not all there is. There's so much more. That is the work of the goddess, animating all of our life, opening it up so wide. Bend your right knee again. Take your left leg to the sky standing split. And you can walk your hands in and maybe your right hand holds onto your calf. Maybe your left hand holds onto your calf. Maybe you're holding on to that standing leg with both of your hands. Or just relax, downward facing dog. Take vinyasa of choice or none at all. As you feel ready, left foot comes forward. Right knee on the mat, Anjaneyasana. Yeah. Nice, Renee. Maybe clasp your hands together. Nice, Carla. Maybe reach up through that pointer finger. Nice, Marjorie. Keep sending that knee forward. Nice, Sarah. Hands down to the floor. Straighten that front leg. Ardha Hanumanasana. Just half Hanuman, so we're keeping that right hip on top of that right knee. You could draw that navel in and just send that chest forward any amount. Maybe take that a little deeper to maybe a little fuller form of Hanuman, taking that left leg a little further, or maybe stay where you are, right? Maybe there's so much information where you are right now. Beautiful. Slide that left foot in so you can plant that foot. Lift the back knee and step the back foot forward just a little bit so both legs can go straight, keeping the back foot on the floor. Tack that left hip crease back. Lift that left low belly a lot. And just notice how much you're on that front foot and that back foot. Be as conscious as being on the whole foot, not just the heel, not just the toes. Bending the front knee, left knee, right leg to the sky. Standing split, pointing those toes down to the floor. And then walking your hands back and maybe holding on with one hand to the calf muscle, maybe both hands. <clears throat> Good. Bring your right foot up to meet your left foot, please. Bend both knees, reach your arms forward and up chair. And then rise up to stand. Bring your arms alongside the body. 
And close your eyes for a moment and just feel. Goddess is the energy that animates our life. Animates all of nature. Sunrise and the sunset. Phases of the moon. Let your eyes open and draw your left knee into your chest. Wrap your left knee on top of your right knee, your right elbow on top of your left, Garudasana. Sit your butt back. And now play with raising the elbows up on an inhale and lowering the elbows to the knees on an exhale. Inhale, raise the elbows up. Exhale, bring them down. One more like that. Inhale, raise them up. Exhale, bring them down and fly away. Take those arms out and up. <laughs> no one knows you just did that. <laughs> no one knows. Change sides. So funny, right? I'm not saying that it isn't sweet for someone to recognize something wonderful that you do. Of course, that's sweet. But that inner affirmation is really all we need. Moving those elbows up and moving them down. And how many times we just don't do something because we have to wait until a certain day to start. We have to make sure it's okay with our friends. We have to make sure all these things and then we never do it. Go ahead and fly away. Beautiful. Let's draw the left knee into the chest and we'll do tree pose. So you take that foot all the way up to your thigh or below onto the calf or below touching the floor. And any arm variation that you like. Nice, everybody. Release that down, try the other side. You ever have a question that's just burning inside of you? Go ahead and come on down. Just go sit by an old tree and ask for therapy. Inhale your arms up to the sky. Exhale, bow forward. Let's step back downward facing dog. Inhale the right leg back and up behind you down dog split. Sending your right knee forward for pigeon pose. If you lie on your back for pigeon, go ahead and flip over onto your back. If you're having your, where your belly is going to face the floor, before you go forward, reach your left hand back for your left ankle thigh stretch if you can. If you want to, reach your right hand back as well. Reaching your right hand back for your ankle as well. <laughs> And release your head down to the floor, releasing that ankle. If you're on your back, make sure that your right foot is flexed, left foot is flexed. To 
just let go. And do when someone asked Swami Satchitananda what was his religion, he said Hinduism. Mm -hmm. Walking yourself back up. Downward dog, if you want to go through vinyasa, that's up to you, or just change, bring your left knee forward <clears throat> for a pigeon. And then choosing if you want to take that thigh stretch, reaching your right hand back for that right ankle. Trick here is to squeeze your knees in toward each other. That gives you stability when you squeeze in. If you want to reach that left hand back as well, pull your throat back. And then gently walk yourself forward, forehead to the mat. Keep breathing. Notice your exhales getting a little longer. Your nervous system relaxing just a little more. I was thinking about it this morning, how that so many of the wild weeds that are out there, the medicinal weeds, one of the first things it always says about it when you look at the benefits of them is to take down inflammation. And there's so much inflammation in this world, <laughs> so much anger. It's so interesting that our wild ones are ones that can help us to take that down a notch. The other day I was just sitting, and I have tons of artemisia in my front yard. I was just sitting with it, getting to know it, but I had to look like I was weeding because I looked wacko, <laughs> you know? by talking to my weeds. I like to look wacko now. <laughs> Isn't that what they say? People leave you alone, the crazier you look. <laughs> Walk up, send your right leg in front of you, please. And keep that left foot in, so you take Janusha and that left foot into your inner right thigh. Twisting over that right leg and bowing forward. See how much you can relax your hands. So I don't mind if you reach for the foot, that's okay. But at some point, see if you can just drop the hands. Nice. You know, when I study with Sarah Tomlinson, especially when I first went to India and she was our guide and I just, learn so much from the letting go, the very feminine way that she taught the practice, which was not gripping, which was even letting go a lot of the ideas of what alignment looked like, which is difficult to do when we're so trained in alignment. Letting the hands soften, the feet soften, the face soften.
And then by feeling the navel draw in, lift yourself all the way back up and change sides. Take your time, savor. Beautiful, nice Andrew. Great Sarah. Allison, beautiful. Eyes are open or closed. For just the next couple of breaths, See what happens when you shift your sacrum back a little bit more and pull your sit bones apart from each other. So the stability that you have is there and then you have the offering to let go. Draw that navel in and rise up slowly and feel. Good, bring the soles of your feet together. Let your knees drop wide, Baddha Konasana. And again, wiggle your butt back. <laughs> Collective wiggling. Good, and come forward any amount. Press those baby toes down into the floor again so the stability is there. The shins are active. You can even lift your knees up a little bit so you really act and feel the action of your shins. And then once that's happened, you can let the knees drop again. Just hands relax. And then as you rise up, reach for your big toes, lift your feet off the floor, stretch your legs wide to letter V. Lift your chest, pull your chest in a lot. Nice, Audrey. And then squeeze your legs together and reach your arms alongside, bow to pose. You can have your knees bent if you'd like. And then go ahead and bend your knees, keep yourself lifted. And then as if you're just dipping your toes in a pool of water, one toe at a time comes down and then the other. Keep your chest curve and move your chest forward, 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 chest, chest. Good, lower both feet down to the floor, bring your hands behind you, come into reverse table. Good, lift your butt up. Good, now lower your seat back down, bend your elbows and shrink back, even tuck your chin into your chest. And then push your chest forward, pull your navel in and lift back up to that reverse table. Good, lower your seat back down, keep your hands where they are and just lift your up to your tippy toes here. So just toes on the floor, toes on the floor. Yeah, now move your chest forward, butt on the floor too. Yeah, chest forward, chest forward, there you go. Now just lift your right leg up and have it in line with your left knee, right leg up. Ooh, ooh, chest forward. This is stupidly hard. <laughs> Lower down, change sides. Lower down, beautiful, really nice everybody. And lay on your back, please. 
You're welcome. <laughs> Telling you, sassy group. <laughs> Hug your knees into your chest. And take it into happy baby pose. Shins go wide, feet are flexed. Good, now wrap your right knee on top of your left knee. Bring your arms down alongside the body. Squeeze your shins toward each other. Pull your inner thighs apart from each other. Not easy to do. Relax your throat. Make sure the knees are drawing in toward the navel and you're squeezing the shins, you're pulling apart the inner thighs. You're whistling a happy tune. <laughs> Good, change side. Good, take both legs up to the sky, flex your feet, take your arms out to letter T, letter T mark, and then open your legs up to letter V, everything's letter, <laughs> letters now, <laughs> good, flex your feet and squeeze your legs slowly back toward each other, I know I've been doing this a lot, I just kind of like it, <laughs> then open up your legs again, keep your ribs down, navel in, Next time your legs come to touch, bring your right leg down toward the floor and let it hover, letter L. <laughs> Welcome to Sesame Street. Good, bring that leg up, switch sides. Brought to you by the letter L. Let it hover. Bring it back up. Just and don't your knees. letter Z. Letter Z? No. <laughs> brought to you by the letter Z. Good. I'm going to give you an opportunity to take an inversion here. So you can just stretch your legs straight back up to the sky and stay there. You can come into shoulder stand. You could go and put your hips up against the wall if you have a wall nearby. Upside down stuff. Yep, that's, that's where we're going. So we explain it in Sanskrit. Upside down stuff. Headstand, handstand. Shoulder stand, legs up the wall. L shape, nice. Just another minute or two here. Mm -hmm. 
Where's Dana? Where's Lisa? <laughs> nice rug. Beautiful. Nice that one. And then begin to bring yourself back down. And then I want you to be on your back. So if you were upright, just come back onto your back. Bring the soles of your feet together. Let your knees drop wide. Yeah, if you have blocks, feel free to put blocks underneath your knees. Allow yourself to let go. Let your breath get a little deeper. Celebrate the energies of Durga, Lakshmi, and Saraswati during the nine days of Navratri. Happens in the new moon of the springtime. Durga is the warrior energy that exists in each and every one of us. A place where we stand up and fight. But the fight is to fight for our own freedom from that which we have entangled ourselves in. But undoism. It's interesting to think of what weapons you bring to your fight. The weapons of compassion, love, consideration for each and every one of the beings in your life and nature and animals. And then Lakshmi energy is what we value, what goes unnoticed, what we think of has less value, and then it disappears. And Saraswati is the eternal wisdom that we are born with, our in, inborn wisdom. Wisdom that reminds us that we are not just this. We are not just this body. We are not just this mind. There's not just this world, there are many worlds. As you draw your knees back in, if you have a block, I'm gonna suggest that you lift your seat up mm -hmm. and you put a block underneath your sacrum for a supported bridge. <clears throat> if you do not have a block, maybe a blanket, and if that doesn't work, or you don't have that either, then feel free to just lift your hips up and take that bridge pose, and then lower back down when you need to. Again, let those shoulders drop open. And the block has those three spaces, right? The small, medium, and high. So if you're using the block, take it to the slowest, the medium, or the highest, see what serves you well. Do you have a blanket in here? Do you have a blanket? Lauren, you don't? So I'm gonna give you a suggestion. If you have a blanket, I'm gonna suggest that you roll it up, 
into a nice circle. Turn over, place it underneath your navel and lay on it. You can separate your legs as wide as you'd like. You do not have a blanket. You can just turn over and do a belly shavasana without it. Just put it underneath your navel, roll it. So it gives you a little bit of firmness. I want this to be a little uncomfortable. <laughs> so it puts a little pressure on your belly. Yep. Again, if you do not have a blanket, that's it, Lisa, perfect. If you do not have a blanket, just do a belly shavasana. Just want it to be a little bit uncomfortable, a little pressure in the belly. Your head is turned to one side, turn it to the other. If you're on your forehead, you can stay right where you are. Ayurveda, we truly believe that every disease comes directly from our digestion, whether it's emotional digestion or physical digestion. So here, just getting a little bit of that belly release. Any stagnation. It's interesting, during the spring, the liver is this, the organ that is always suggested that we super nourish it. But a lot of people do like liver detoxes, which is like the liver's already like so overused. The detoxing it harshly is not a good plan, but your dandelions are coming up in your yard. Take those, eat those with your salads or make some tea. Good, press back to child's pose, please. Good, as you rise up, just flip back onto your back, hug your knees into your chest. Lift and shift your hips to the right, let your knees drop to the left, spinal twist. And take it to the other side. Beautiful, everyone. Come back to center and relax in Shavasana.
And as they gently begin to deepen your breath, let your body begin to stretch and yawn in any way that serves you well. If you're lying down, hug your knees into your chest, roll to the right side, come on up to sit. Once you've arrived, bring your hands to your heart center. Maybe together learn again and again that we are the wise one. We are the wild weeds. We are everything and more. Inhale for the sound of Om, deep breath in. Sliding your hands to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste, everyone. Thank Namaste. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Go make magic. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl.